Hello everybody, Cooper here and welcome back to another episode of the Mosswood Academy here on Cricket Captain 2023. Let's put the fan on. There we go. It's a little bit cool today, but it's still warm at the desk. I um, hope you're all doing very well. Uh, we are back from international duty, um, doing our tours of, it was Afghanistan and Pakistan. So let's have a little look on how we've been going. We obviously had the World Test Championship, which we won, which we would have covered in the last episode. Uh, but in between that, we have uh, done very well in the uh, series up against Afghanistan. We only played the two test matches, three one days and one T20. Uh, the first test was very one-sided. We batted first. Um, got 649 for 8 after 129 overs uh, with three of our batsmen making centuries and we almost had a fourth with Ferguson getting 98. Um, as I said, very one-sided this one. Uh, Rashid Khan was the pick of the bowlers going, going at 4 for 179, sorry, 4 for 171 from his 40 overs. Um, yeah, they were very... Uh, expensive. We did make the most of their poor bowling attack. We then bowled them all out uh, for 180. Um, we did have them 5 for 155 and then we took those last 5 wickets very quickly. Uh, with Marco Jansen being the pick of the bowlers, picking up 5 for 46. Disco Jones and Okori picked up the other 5. And then we bowled them all out in the third innings for 158. Corey picking up four, Zanderson picking up three. Uh, the second test was a little bit closer, not by a great margin, but a little bit closer in that we actually batted twice this time around. Uh, first innings we batted and got all out for 237. We um, only had uh, Cyrus Williams doing a decent job at the bat, got 69 runs off 94 deliveries. I believe he might have been the last man out, actually. Uh, now that I think back to the match, which was a couple of days ago now, Rashid Khan picked up a Pfeiffer. It was, again, a little bit expensive, but did a decent job. Uh, in their first innings, we bowled them all out for 135, um, which I think... I can't even remember what they got in their last match, but Corey and Zanderson picked up four each. Did a really good job with the ball. I believe we went unchanged into this match. Um... If I'm mistaken, please let me know in the comments. And then in the second innings for us, we got six for four, 77 in a much better uh, batting performance. Williams picked up 100. Ferguson got his first test 100, as did Smith Jr., I believe. Uh, yes, so um, he picked up his first test 100. Um, we were much better in this uh, innings compared to the first. And we then bought them all out for 222 with a quarry picking up four wickets and Zanderson getting three. Um, but if we look at, can we look at team stats? Is that a thing we can look at here? No, it is. If we go test series, no, it's not gonna let us do it. Never mind. For the one day series, we had a slightly different team, um, but the same bulk of our players were, were still in the team. Uh, in the first one day, we won by 65 runs. We got just short of 300 in our first, oh, our only, only innings I should say, with Graham Smith Jr. getting 137 on debut. Um, really good, really, really good. I was really happy with how we performed. Um, stayed pretty much above six runs and over for the majority of the innings. It was really towards the end that we sort of lost track. Um, although we were seven for 197 at one point, which was a little bit disappointing. But then we bowled them all out for 2.34. Uh, Gibson Flair picked up 4.43 uh, from his 7.2 overs. And everyone else sort of chipped in here and there. I did bring Beamish in, Beamish in for the one day uh, stuff. And I think he did make a test appearance a bit later on. Um, actually, no, he didn't. He's only played some one days and he wasn't very good in the one days. So... Um, I know I've said previously he might be a red ball specialist, but I wanted to give him a go because we'd only played with fast bowlers up until this point. Um, but this, this, this is sort of an average performance for him. 
We then uh, had the second match where we won by six wickets. We batted second. Uh, Gerbaz for them got 100. We did have them four for 33, and then there was a massive partnership in the middle of 157. Uh, but Gibson Flair picked up three wickets, as did Janssen and Zanderson. Uh, Corey got the other one. Yeah, Neil Williams picked up 107 not out for his first one day international 100. Cyrus Williams, he's been in oh, some hot form with the bat, um, especially at test and one day level. He's been really good. Um, of his six test innings, you know, 300s and 150 um, with numerous not out scores, he's been really good. Really good start to his career. Kurtz and Davilius and Markram um, sort of failed to fire in this match, but nothing to be too concerned about. And then in the third one day international, which was the closest match uh, so far, we won by seven runs. Uh, we posted eight for three, 14 in our innings. Kurtzen got a half century, as did De Villiers. Smith Jr. just fell short, got 43 off 31. Um, we had a bit, a bit of trouble against the spin bowlers um, with Nazi Fuller um, picking up four for and Ur Rahman and Khan keeping the runs down, but it was the fast bowlers that we really took advantage of early in the innings. And we bowled them all out um, after 47 overs. We had them seven for 92, so for sorry, for 292. And Gibson Flair right at the end picked up three wickets to get us over the line. So very lucky to not lose this match. And then we had the one twenty twenty. We won by 26 runs, got 200 uh, and seven in our innings uh, after the 20 overs. Batted really well. Ferguson was a highlight getting 79 on debut. And then in their innings, we bowled them all out for 181 in the final over with uh, Zahir for them picking up 67. And uh, Disco Jones was, I mean, I wouldn't, say the pick of the bowlers, he got the most wickets, but he also went for the most runs. I'd say Gantz and, and Flair with the pick of the bowlers getting two for 20 odd each. That brings us to the series up against Pakistan, where we were a bit more dominant um, in the test arena anyway. Uh, 432 all out in our innings. Uh, Neil Williams picking up 150, Cyrus Williams Picking up another test century. Uh, Shaheen Jarafridi picked up five for um, in what was mainly pretty flat batting tracks out in Pakistan. Not a lot happening for spin. We bowled them all out for 110 in their first innings. We did have them six for 87 and then rolled them very quickly once they passed 100 with uh, Disco Jones picking up five for 28. And then again, we bowled them all out. Very similar story, 163 all out. Shaquille picked up 80 in what was basically a lone man, lone man effort in the, this innings. Uh, Akori picked up six for 62. He's been really impressive to start his test career, picking up 37 wickets so far. Uh, not as good in the limited over stuff, but I feel like just with game time, that will come. Um, but a really good performance by us uh, in which we repeated again in the second test. Uh, Aidan Markham got a double hundred. Graham Smith Jr. got 94. Jensen ended up with 75 not out um, in a really good dominant batting performance. Kurtzen also got a 50. We then bowled them all out for 286 in their first innings with Zanderson picking up Pfeiffer. Corey got three and Jensen got two. And then we bowled them all out for 78. Janssen picked up six for in a really dominant bowling performance. Really, really happy. And then the third test, we won by nine wickets. Uh, they batted first. Uh, they actually batted really well. Uh, got 387 all out for after 112 overs. Uh, Janssen was expensive, but got his five wickets. Um, this pitch was a bit flatter than the other ones that we played on for memory, so... Um, yeah, expectedly that we did concede more runs. Uh, we, in reply, got 487 with Janssen getting 100, as did Kurtzen with a few half-centuries uh, chipped in for good measure. 
Uh, we then bowled them all out for 138 with Disco Jones picking up four for in a really, really good bowling performance. Bowled 21 overs, got 11 maidens, which I was really happy about. And then we uh, were only chasing 39. Markham got out, unfortunately, um, so we couldn't get a 10 wicket win. Um, but we did well to, uh, to get the win in this one. We then had a couple of one day internationals, which we did a clean sweep of. Uh, we beat Pakistan in the first one by eight wickets, uh, chasing 214. We bowled reasonably well. Uh, Beamish, pick of the bowlers, got three for 51. Gibson Flair also got three for 35, but was a little bit more expensive. I know just barely, but um, I, this was Beamish's best performance. So I'm gonna give him credit where, he, where it's due. And then, um, while we were chasing, De Villiers got his first uh, one day international 100. Um, first of many, I'm hoping from him. Kurtzen got run out for 52. I also recalled Quinton de, uh, de Kock. He played in uh, in this match um, and, he, and he got 37. I think he, did, he made some reasonable contributions in this series. I only record him for this series because I sent a few of our players back to the Mosswood Academy just to get some more uh, domestic runs into them before I bring them back into the international side. So I did some slight tweaks in this one, uh, but this was a very comfortable win for us. Uh, in the second one, we batted first, got 369. We only won by 28 runs in the end. De Villiers getting another half century and Mark from getting 116 um, off 76 balls, really, really solid innings. Um, but yeah, we didn't bowl at all, like, fantastically well. Uh, Babur Azam got a big hundred. Uh, Rizwan and Ayub got half centuries. Um, just not a very good bowling performance, unfortunately. Um, but we did make up for it in the third one day international. We uh, bowled a lot better um, compared to the last one. Babur Azam got another hundred. Um, so, you know, I mean, when you've got a class player like Babur Azam, you know, you just can't. So sometimes, sometimes you just can't bowl to him. You know, he's just so good. Marco Jensen picked up six for Gibson. Flair was expensive, as was Beamish. This was Beamish's last appearance for a while before I sent him back to the Mosswood Academy. And then we chased it down very comfortably um, after 42 overs. All of our batsmen got half centuries, uh, but Quinton de Kock got 150 not out in a really good innings. So I was really impressed with him. And then we played a couple of 2020s, uh, three of them actually. Um, we beat Pakistan in the first one by seven wickets, bowled really well. Uh, Haynes got three for nine upon international return and Disco Jones also picked up three wickets. And then we chased it down fairly comfortably with De Villiers getting 53 um, with the bat. Smith Jr. finished not out on 20 and Mark Rim finished not out on seven. In the second match, we won fairly comfortably. 136 runs was the winning margin. De Villiers and Ferguson got half centuries uh, before we lost a few wickets in the middle order towards the back end of the match. Um, and with the ball, we were really good. Bowled them all out for 83. Gibson Flair, three for six. Haynes, three for 29. Disco Jones, two for 29. Everyone else bowled really well. Uh, Zanderson was also really good. Two overs, one for three, nine dot balls, really solid. And then in the final uh, T20, we bowled them all out for 88. Uh, Gibson Flair picking up four for 18. Zanderson picked up three for 25. Um, and we chased it down with uh, plenty of time to spare. Ferguson getting uh, a half century and De Villiers finishing not out as well. That brings us all up to speed on the international side of things. But how have we gone domestically in our absence? Well, the Provincial T20 Cup we have lost. We lost in the final to Mpumalanga. I believe that's how you say that. Uh, group stage, we finished second. We did lose a group stage fixture. I don't remember who against. Uh, I'm not gonna go into too much detail of the domestic stuff. Um, otherwise this would be a much longer video than I probably want. Uh, I will go over the stats though in a minute. Uh, but yeah, this was a disappointing outcome as we are playing some lesser sides. Obviously, our main talent wasn't available, so we're relying on guys who aren't as good, but 
I still would have liked us to win this competition fairly comfortably. And then in the four-day stuff so far, we've played two games, we've lost both of them, and we are not looking all that great. So, not ideal. Uh, we're in the one-day cup now, uh, which is where we're up to. I don't know when our next international series is. In a couple of weeks' time, we've got three tests against the West Indies. Uh, three one days and then three twenty twenties, and then uh, Zimbabwe play us in South Africa at home. So when does the so we might we might come back at the end of the Zimbabwe uh, portion of the season. Um, but let's go over the stats of the domestic stuff for now. So we'll go over the T20 stuff. Matthews was really good opening the batting, got 225 runs at 56. Um, I actually haven't looked at these stats yet, so it'll be interesting to see who's played and who hasn't. Wellington in his first season averaged 20, not too bad. Um, I would like to see that strike rate a little bit higher, but Matthews might be getting an international call up if he continues his 2020 form the way he has. He's actually been bowling a little bit, which is interesting. Uh, Varen and Kashil have both been playing, uh, which has been interesting. Duplessis also been playing. So we are obviously lacking some batting options. Uh, Redwood, um, that's, I don't know why he's showing, he's played 15 games. He's obviously played some more fixtures. Cilius was good with the ball, not so much good with the bat. And then with the ball, we had Drakes, Pinklet, and Digweed as our players. Uh, Digweed was really good. Pinklet and Drakes, not so good. Um, so I wouldn't mind seeing Bradfield, um, Archibald playing, getting, getting some game time. Hatsogli, I think he's just a reserve player, so he's not an option. Uh, but let's go to the first class stuff. Uh, I can see that Pinklet's have done really well. 34, sorry, 94 runs at an average of 31.33. Good strike rate, doing decent with the ball. Drake's hasn't been great. Um, it's got a bowling average of 114, which is not ideal. Archibald's been okay. He's only played the one fixture. Okori played one match before being recalled to the chess team. And Haynes also played one match where he was really good um, before getting recalled. Uh, Cilias was our spin option. Um, our other spin option, apart from Archibald, I should say. Uh, picked up six wickets. Uh, Wellington got... Um, how did he go? He got a half century. Uh, he's got an average of 35 at the moment. Matthews has been good. I believe Matthews has been opening the bats, the bat with Willoughby. Um, who's not been doing too bad. Matthews has been good. Dawson's been good. Um... Not so good in the 2020 stuff, but uh, he's got another 100 to his name, so he might be getting a call up. And then Dante Daniels has been horrific in the first class stuff, averaging 15. So not as well, um, I have to say. And Varen's actually been really good in the first class stuff. Um, so there's stuff to do. We probably in the off-season would like to get another opening batsman or at least maybe train another one to be someone else to be an opening batsman. Um, but we've got some domestic games which I'll play off camera. As I said, I will come back um, at the end of this Zimbabwe series. Um, actually, when does this, the Bangladesh series? That starts at the 6th of March. Then we got two tests. So we've got a pretty easy test year this well test season this year I should say for the test championship it says that we've only played one series um, we've played two series so I don't know why that's the case um, oh I know why it's because we've played um, Afghanistan and they're not in the test championship that's why it says we've only played one series um, but we're currently sitting in first with a win rate of 100%. Um, we'll obviously see how we go with the other test matches we played this year. We obviously won the test championship uh, last time of asking. Uh, that is something I would like to continue. Um, 
currently the number one test team in the world, which is nice. Uh, but in terms of the one day, as we're currently sitting in fourth, but within the number one T20 team as well. So, um, but look at the test championship and we'll look at the one day championship. We're currently sitting top of that as well. Um, with two series victories, six wins, no losses. Uh, in terms of the history of the ODI championship, I don't know if that's the World Cup or not. I'm assuming it is. It says that Australia won that in this universe, which they did in real life. And then India won it in 2027. So um, there's a lot to be done. Um, in terms of this stuff, the batsmen and bowlers and all-rounders, a lot of our guys won't be showing um, just because they haven't played enough games. But like guys like Mark Grimm and Jansen will show. Um, so maybe after a couple of seasons, I might show this off just to see how well our guys are going. Um, we'll just see if we've got any bowlers. We've got Mark Grimm. I'm um, not Mark Grimm. Jansen as the top test bowler. Um, but we've got guys like Todd Murphy, who's had a really good career so far, 151 test wickets. I wonder if Jimmy Anderson's still going, because he was still playing at like 44, or is he retired now? Let's have a, I'm, only, I'm not gonna do this for every player that's ever played, but I wanna see if Jimmy Anderson's still playing. No, he's retired. How many wickets did he finish with? 871, he played a ton of test matches. He retired at the age of 44. What a guy. Um, but yeah, anyway. Of the current batch of players, Tim Southey's currently got the most test wickets. This is how it looks uh, for everybody else. And in terms of uh, the batsmen, these are who've got the most runs. So I might do this after every couple of years or so, just to do a bit of housekeeping, see how everybody's going. Um, but that's going to do it for today, guys. So thank you so much for watching up until this point. Uh, if you're enjoying the series, um, you know, leave a comment telling me that you are. Um, I should say um, that the day that I'm recording this is the day that I've started streaming again. So um, if you're from the stream, um, or if you like liking my streams. Um, I'm assuming I would have done a few streams at the point of this video coming out. Um, leave a comment on, on that as well. I do appreciate all the feedback. Um, but until next time, I hope you have a lovely day and I'll see you then. Bye.